everyone. Welcome to this day. It is Saturday, May 21st. On today's show, we have Dr. Robert Prinsenthal, who is here on behalf of RadNet, and he has some great information on early detection as well as different kinds of options you can choose if you have been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Then we talk to Eric Scarborough, who is a candidate for the Orange County Superior Court as a judge. All right, let's take a look at our local weather where we are looking at, uh, again, morning clouds, but we will be burning those off after the uh, midday hours. 71.55 today, 71.58 tomorrow, and then 73.62 on Monday. If you are traveling, take a look at these numbers. Uh, we are looking at local temperatures 6758, San Diego 6557, Santa Barbara 6553, and then Palm Springs 9569. Tahoe, Big Bear, and Mammoth all in the mid to upper 60s with the overnights in the 30s, and Las Vegas 9268. Our sunrise this morning was at 549, and our sunset will be at 746. And thank you, Alan, for sending in this beautiful shot of a bougainvillea. I really think that's absolutely beautiful. So thanks for sending that in. If you have a photo you would like to share with us, please email it to lagunawoodsvillagetv at gmail.com. When we come back, we will have Dr. Prinsenthal, so stick around. Village Television presents Friday Films, only on Village Television. Fridays at 2 and 6 p.m. Foreign Films, Dramas and Comedies, Award-Winning Films, Romance and Mystery, Independent Films, every Friday, only on Village Television. Oh, life, how we admire you, are deeply fascinated by you. All your twists and turns and wild rides you take us on. The ups and the downs. Life, you live inside all of us, breathing, growing, beating. You are the reason we'll always provide world-class health care. Providence, we see the life in you. Achieve a level of comfort you've never known before. The Daydreamer will take you through smooth movements and guide you effortlessly into your favorite positions. Adjust the power pillow for ideal support for your head and neck. This and our positioning technology allows for infinite relaxation. Lay back in zero gravity while watching TV and put your body and mind at ease. Lift your spirits and find your favorite daydream. Contact your local Golden Retailer today. Under the RadNet umbrella, prostate imaging is one of our most important men's health initiatives. We have an exclusive team of prostate-dedicated radiologists that read thousands of images from all around the globe. These radiologists are utilizing advanced technology such as prostate MRI, which offers some of the most detailed visual representations of the prostate gland. When it comes to men's health issues, listen to your body and take a proactive approach. Talk to your doctor, begin screening, and take charge of your health. Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dr. Robert Prinsenthal, who is here on behalf of RadNet. Well, welcome, Dr. Prinsenthal. It's been a while. Thank you. Good to see you again, Lisa. Good to see you. And, uh, you know, you guys are on the forefront of all the prostate cancer that's going on and all the treatments. And uh, I, I thank you for being here to discuss more. Um, since we've last uh, talked, it seems like there's been a lot of new information. There has, certainly. Well, this week, the AUA meeting is going on, which is the American Urologic Association. 
And what I think has really changed is the wider acceptance of urologists to recommend and recognize how prostate MR can really help men uh, who are at risk for prostate cancer. Okay. Uh, as we discussed before, the prior method of cancer detection was to get an elevated PSA and a blind biopsy uh, without image guidance. But now with prostate MRI, we can actually see tumors and we can therefore recommend a targeted biopsy with greater accuracy. But more importantly, we can suggest that a man may not need a biopsy if the MR looks totally benign. So I think the men are getting the word that they shouldn't be afraid about getting screened for prostate health and urologists are quickly recognizing a valuable role that radiologists can now play. That is, that is great news. And, you know, it is amazing. Technology is moving so fast and, uh, you know, well, we welcome it for sure because the quicker we can catch things, the better off a person is. And, you know, men need to realize that prostate cancer and breast cancer are really two sides of the same coin. The statistics show that roughly 225,000 men and 225,000 women will be diagnosed each year of their respective diseases. Mm -hmm. And even with improved early detection, roughly 28,000 men and women unfortunately die of their respective diseases. So what we're trying to do is to raise awareness for men that prostate cancer doesn't have to be a death sentence. And now we have a lot more different treatment options to reduce the side effects of uh, prostate cancer treatment. At what point? I mean, you know, most most men, I think we've talked about this before, they don't like to go to the doctor. But when they do go to the doctor, is there something that they should be asking their doctor for, or is it a routine part of their exam? Well, if the urologist is saying your PSA is elevated and I may want to do a biopsy, I think it's important for the patient then to be proactive and say, I heard that imaging may be useful to either tell you where to put the needle, or in fact, I may not need a biopsy. And to have a shared decision discussion with their urologist about the role of imaging. And then of course, there's also improved genomics or what we call the liquid biopsy. And that would be a urine test called the exosome DX or a 4K score or things like that that can help triage men at risk to again, uh, figure out who would best benefit from this procedure. Got it, okay, great. Now, there's a couple of, uh, of companies that you guys are working with that are bringing in artificial intelligence. How is that uh, working with some of the testing or is it, some of, is, is it more of the operational side? It, it's really the operational side, but I'm so proud to be part of Radnet. They had the vision and acquired a Dutch company called Quantu, and it's now merged and rolled into Radnet has a whole separate arm for artificial intelligence called Deep Health out of Boston. Mm -hmm. So the FDA has just re, uh, approved the new 2.0 software release for Quantip, which really expands its role and allows us to be much more efficient in how we perform and interpret the prostate MR. But more importantly, it helps us become a little bit more accurate by having artificial intelligence point out heat maps of areas of interest mm -hmm. to make sure that we see all the areas. Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, it's it's crazy how, like we said already, how fast technology is moving and all this new stuff. That's awesome. Now, the Tulsa we had talked about before, has anything changed with that? Yes, um, Tulsa has improved their technology. And for people who don't know what Tulsa stands for, it's not the city in Oklahoma. <laughs> Tulsa stands for transurethral ablation of prostate tissue using high intensity focused ultrasound. So what makes this technique unique is that we can image the gland under real-time heat mapping, and we, in effect, cook the tissue from the inside out. And we have incredible real-time control with the MR. And we do this as a team with an anesthesiologist, a urologist, and the radiologist. Mm -hmm. And we can treat the whole gland, and we can avoid damage of the neurovascular bundles, and we can avoid damage the urinary sphincter so that when men recover from this, there should be no loss of bladder control and they should be able to maintain their baseline erectile function. Yeah, that's great. That is awesome. And, and you know, that should be a nice comfort to most people who have had uh, the diagnosis that these types of, of choices are there for them. So, and, and, and to have the kind of recovery that you're talking about is great.
But I think it's important to talk about inclusion criteria. Tulsa is not for every man. Mm -hmm. If you, for some men, we find a low grade small volume prostate cancer called Gleason score six or grade group one. Most people now even want to take away that stigma of calling it prostate cancer. And for those men, we can just treat with watchful waiting or active surveillance. But if men have a larger volume or more aggressive disease, what we call grade group two, three, or four, and their prostate is the right size and there's no calcifications within it, they may be a candidate for treatment with Tulsa. Okay. And the advantage is this is an outpatient procedure. They come in in the morning, they're home four hours later, uh, and the only thing they have is a draining catheter for 10 to 14 days. Mm -hmm. But that's it. There's no pain medicine. And the long-term and intermediate data suggests that we maintain excellent oncological control comparable to the outcomes with surgery and radiation therapy. So you mentioned um, you know, men and women both have um, their respective diseases. So for women, you know, we go and we have a yearly exam and our breasts are checked and we also do self-check. So what is it a man should do? Well, the, the, the usual preventative uh, recommendations, which are easy to say and hard to follow, and that's to maintain a healthy lifestyle, uh, to have a low fat diet, the Mediterranean diet, to have regular exercise, uh, to know what your family risk factors are. You can't change your, your genes and your, uh, you know, where you came from, but if you are aware that you're at increased risk, then we recommend earlier screening. And just like with women with breast cancer, some breast cancers don't show up on mammography, but you can feel a lump. So we still recommend that patients undergo a digital rectal exam by their urologist because a small number of prostate cancers really don't overexpress PSA. Mm -hmm. So if you get your yearly PSA screening, uh, starting at 50 for normal risk patients, 45 for men at higher risk, uh, take advantage of the genomic liquid biopsy scores and prostate MR should you develop cancer, which one in eight men will do eventually mm. sometime in their lifetime, that we can find it when it's contained to the gland and it's easily treatable and that there's no adverse outcome on their long-term uh, survival. Now, you mentioned the PSA test. Is that something that they need to ask the doctor for? Um, usually, um, in years ago, the United States Preventative Task Force guidelines thought that PSA screening wasn't cost effective, mm -hmm. and they didn't recommend that men get a PSA. So it created a lot of controversy and confusion. Mm -hmm. But now with the role of MR, PSA, when used accurately, can really help save lives, and it really is a cost-effective screening tool. So if the doctor doesn't suggest it, all men at the age of 50 should say, I want a PSA. Perfect. Well, that's what I wanted to make sure you said, because I think a lot of folks may forget uh, that that's something they need to do. And, uh, you know, sometimes, like I said before, you try to get the, get the men to go to the doctor and it's, it's like pulling teeth. It is. It is. Nobody wants to do it, but everybody needs to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for the information. I appreciate it. Thank you for getting the word out as always. Thank you again. You're welcome. And if you want more information about what we've just discussed, you can always go to prostate.radnet.com. We'll be right back. Diane's Hallmark in Laguna Niguel is now an Elam's Hallmark, and we are excited to be part of your community. We have just remodeled, and you will be surprised by the wide variety of fashion and accessories, home decor, collectibles, Disney, Peanuts, Harry Potter, and Star Wars, along with the largest Hallmark card selection in town. Stop in today and sign up for our Crown Rewards program and get a free Just Because card. Once a member, you can get a free card once a month. Elam's Hallmark, your neighborhood gift store.
Welcome back. Well, today we have Eric Scarborough, who is a candidate for the Orange County Superior Court judge. Well, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Now, uh, you've, you've been a prosecutor and you've been doing an awful lot of things here in Orange County, but before we get into a lot of your history, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised here in Orange County. I'm the youngest of three sons. My parents came into Orange County because they were looking for an opportunity. They wanted to start small businesses and they came from real small towns in the south and it was very difficult, Southern California by the border, mm -hmm. to start any sort of business there. So this was their opportunity to really kind of be on their own and develop the, uh, the family. Well, nice. Well, what kind of businesses did they start? So my dad is an accountant, so he, he opened a CPA firm, but he started a Casa de Cambio, a check, cas check cashing uh, oh, establishment. Okay. And it was a family business. When we weren't at home, the weekends we were cleaning, we were helping out, doing anything we could. The whole family was involved. Right. Oh, that's great. And you know, I think that's kind of lost these days, right? I mean, we don't really have that many family businesses that go back generations. So um, that's nice to hear that you still have one, at least still in the, in the area. Um, so you've been a prosecutor for some time. What would be some of the cases that you've been handling? Well, one of the major areas I've worked in was sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And that was a tremendous experience. It was something that I wasn't really prepared for when I started, mm -hmm. but we're dealing with the most vulnerable victims, children, adult females, and one of the very first cases I handled was a cold hit case where it took 20 years for the victim to get justice. Mm -hmm. It was a terrible kidnap, rape over Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And when I got the case, it was an incredible challenge to put it together, but ultimately, after 20 years, we were able to get this woman justice. Wow, well, you know, you have a family, and you have children, and when you hear about cases like that, it, it, it must just be pretty gut-wrenching. You know, I'm very fortunate, because my wife and my children are my relief. They are my safety. It's what makes me motivated to do the work, but it also gives me that safety valve when I can come home and kind of leave work at the office. Right. How old are your children? I have a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. Oh, so you're three. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot to handle and a lot of things. So, you know, it's tough to be a family man as well as, you know, do a lot of these things. How do you think the transition from being a prosecutor to a judge will play, you know, kind of go into play? That's an interesting question. That's very common for you become an attorney, you're an attorney and then you become a judge. So one of the things that not a lot of people realize with prosecutors is we already evaluate cases where we have to look at both sides. Okay. Before a case is ever filed, we're already looking at the defenses, the, the whether or not it should be filed in the first place. It's going to be an interesting change, but I'm looking forward to now instead of being an advocate, really going for uh, being able to sit back and listen to both sides before I make a decision. Right. This is something that I think is essential, is really having an open mind for being a judge and something that I've always prided myself on as an attorney. Outside of uh, just being a prosecutor, what are some of the things that you do in the community that might lend to your experience? Well, I've been a senior deputy district attorney for about 10 years now. And one of the things when I started working these vertical units, sexual assault and homicide, I felt like I needed to shift back to really help the community. So one of the groups I'm involved in works with f uh, fifth graders and sixth graders, where we keep them out of gangs, we tell them the importance of, of schooling, and now we've really shifted into talking about cyberbullying and that kind, mm. of, that kind of social stigma that comes with the, the internet age. Another group that I'm involved with that I'm very, very happy to have been working with for the past 15 years is the Constitutional Rights Foundation. Mm. I work with high school students and really we teach them about our form of government, particularly the, the judicial branch. They actually take on the roles of uh, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and mm -hmm. witnesses, mm -hmm. and they do a full trial. We compete at the high school level um, amongst several high schools in Orange County. I worked first with uh, Northwood in uh, Irvine for mm -hmm. several years, mm -hmm. and these last several years I've been working with Santa Ana High School. That's great, that's great. I mean, that's certainly something that needs to be uh, on the forefront and the fact that you're working with the younger ones I think that is great because you just it seems like they're just getting younger and younger and it really gives us an opportunity to kind of stop people from getting involved in the criminal justice system at all right these students it's all volunteer time we meet usually for three sometimes four hours after school on the weekends it's a huge commitment for them and and they do phenomenal 
What's the reception like at the high school level to do something like that? You know, it's a little bit of, we have to kind of prove ourselves, as you can kind of imagine. It's like a substitute teacher coming in. At first, everyone's a little bit wary, and they don't have necessarily the, the level of understanding. But within a few days, they not only do they get it, they really seem to love and appreciate having us there. Great. Well, the more we can educate our young ones on what goes on, the better. And we've had some great success with these students. Some have gone on to Ivy League schools. A lot of them have gone on to four-year colleges where they've done amazing work. That is great. That is great. Now, you have uh, quite a few people that have endorsed you. Tell me a little bit about that. I've been very fortunate, luckily, through my work as a prosecutor and in the community, a lot of people have really stepped up and said, this is someone we need as a judge. Don Barnes, the sheriff, he's been a, a huge supporter of mine. But what I really appreciate is I'm getting support from really all sides. I have from all the political spectrum, people are lining up to support me. I've had police agencies, defense attorneys, uh, the, the lawyers, the public lawyers, so the prosecutors and the public defenders have both stepped step forward to support me. It's been a tremendous amount of a well of support that I've really appreciated. Why is it important for us as voters to choose the right judge? The judge is one of the government officials who has the most direct, immediate impact on people's lives. Not a lot of people think about that. They think about maybe the local races, the mayors or the presidential races, but a judge is someone who makes a decision about people's lives every day. Mm -hmm. When we talk about lawsuits and they, and uh, bail, all those sorts of factors are all done by a judge making those decisions. So it's important to get the right experienced judge. That's really what's key. You need somebody who has seen it, who understands it, and understands the impact the law will have on people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think that I can bring to the table is for the past almost 20 years now, I've done it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That is great. Well, I appreciate the information. Thank you so much and good luck to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. And if you want more information about Eric Scarborough, you can always go to his website, which is scarboroughforjudge.com. We'll be right back. Number one reported accident for a senior is a fall. Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks. If you've taken a bad fall or your balance isn't what it used to be, it's time to try 60 Up. It's safe, it's effective balance training that can get you back on your feet in as little as three weeks, like it did me. If you have balance, strength, or mobility issues, you need 60 Up. Within a couple weeks, my balance has improved. If you're feeling scared, you need 60 Up. It works. Go to 60up.com. That's the number 60up.com. It changed my life, and it can change yours, too. Your dentures need to be replaced or are they worn out or broken? Dr. Damon Anderson from Laguna Niguel Family Dental Care is here to help with your denture need. We do in-office denture repairs, same-day denture relines, and provide metal and non-metal partial dentures. Laguna Niguel Family Dental Care also provides implant-supported over-dentures completely replaced by Dr. Anderson himself. New appliances are an opportunity to get one to two shades lighter for a more youthful look. Give us a call today or visit our website for a video consult at LagunaNiguelSedationDentist.com. Nothing spoils outdoor fun like a day-biting mosquito. The 80s mosquito, known as the ankle biter, spreads diseases like Zika, Dengue, and yellow fever. These aggressive little buggers need only a cap full of water to breathe. So throw away, turn over, empty twice a week, or drill holes in the bottom of any container that holds at least a teaspoon of water. Protect yourself by wearing mosquito repellent and closing all unscreened windows and doors. To report unusual numbers of mosquitoes, call Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District. When a loved one requires ongoing assistance and attention, home-related care and caregiving become viable alternatives to an existence dependent upon hospitalization. Your Home Care provides thoughtful general care and assistance with the basic necessities of daily living, all within familiar surroundings. Call 949-215-0004 to schedule a personal in-home consultation. Adventure has a new look. The 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. Sure-footed symmetrical all-wheel drive. Paired with all-terrain Yokohama Geolander tires. Plus 9.2 inches of ground clearance. Discover adventure on a deeper level. 
the all-new 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. Irvine Subaru. Buy online, just come in to sign. Get two years complimentary maintenance included on all new Subarus. Are you or someone you know facing financial challenges from unexpected emergency expenses? The foundation of Laguna Woods Village can provide the temporary help you need. Meals on Wheels, adult day services, dental services, medical alert services, and ambulance contracts. Contact the Village Social Services at 949-597-4267 to see if you qualify. Neighbors Helping Neighbors, the mission of the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. back. Our movie for today is called Much Ado About Nothing and that stars Emma Thompson and you will be able to catch that today at 2 and 6 p.m. both with closed captioning and that is brought to you by Memorial Care. And then on Monday we have The Matrix and of course you can catch that at the same times 2 and 6 p.m. both with closed captioning and that is brought to you by Harvard Eye Associates. Now, don't forget that today, this afternoon, is the Renaissance Fair at the Equestrian Center. So it's going to be a blast. They're going to have Shakespeare performers, dancing, music, uh, different types of, of artistry, and blacksmith, and just, it's going to be a blast. So really enjoy it. Food, it's only $5 to get in. But of course, you will have to purchase your food from the food truck. And also there's beer and wine and other things that you can purchase as well. So it's at the Equestrian Center. And if you need shuttle service, that is available from 1130 in the morning to 530 in the afternoon. And that's um, up behind the Equestrian Center where they would like you to park. So it should be a blast. So don't forget about that. Now, next week, we've got a couple of other things that are going on. So we wanted to share those with you. Open House and Film Premiere is on Monday, May 23rd. So it's going to be at the Video Lab and the Studio, and that's between Clubhouse 2 and Pool 2. And you can check that out. They've got lots of different fun things going on there. And as I mentioned, they are going to have a film preview. So you can check that out. So very fun. And uh, then don't forget our 60 Up raffle is still going on. We are going to do the drawing on May 31st in the morning and uh, right here on this day. So make sure you get your name, phone number, and address to village.television at vmsinc.org so you too can win a free balance board training system and we will choose just one. All right, let's take a look at our weather one last time. Our temperatures are going to be in the low 70s today, 71.55. Tomorrow, 71.58, and then on Monday, 73.62. If uh, you are traveling, take a look at these numbers. Our local beaches are 67.58, San Diego 65.57, Santa Barbara 65.53, Palm Springs 95.69, Tahoe, Big Bear and Mammoth all in the mid to upper 60s and overnight in the 30s, and Las Vegas 92.88. Have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, Paul Ortiz will be here on Monday to host for me, and I will be back here on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.